the Amazing Spider-Man suit. As far as I'm aware, this was one of the first times anyone made such huge changes to the original Spider-Man outfit. It was controversial. So controversial that they replaced it with a newer one in the sequel. Yes, that is why we got that beautiful outfit. Because of this one. People hated it because of its small yellow eyes, its menacing look, its complicated pattern, and skinny spider logo. It didn't look like Spider-Man, it looked like something different. But why did people love this costume, but not the redesigns that came after? Who is Peter Parker in your story? Who is Spider-Man? Is he just supposed to be Spider-Man and nothing more? Then don't touch the suit too much. Don't make it extremely weird. Do this, and not this. This is my proposed standard procedure for any Marvel team-up game. If Spider-Man is just supposed to be there, help you fight, and make jokes about why his marriage keeps getting ripped away from him, then don't touch the suit too much. Maybe change the logo or make the lenses yellow, but that's it. No more. But what about when Peter is the focus? What about when the answer to who is Peter Parker is to be more than just Spider-Man? To be rash, to be angry, to be a sad teenager who lost his parents, and to be someone who held on to that for most of his life. To be someone who lost the last father figure he had, one he neglected because of his parents' absence, because of his pettiness towards some dickhead corner store employee. What does a Peter Parker, who uses his powers only to find the man that murdered his uncle, wear? He wears this shit! This suit is everything Peter Parker is in this movie. Complicated, angry, edgy, an asshole. This suit feels like it's one with who Spider-Man is in this movie. What's even better is that if you compare the suit that Peter wears in Tasm 2 to this one, you realize that their costumes chart Peter's growth spectacularly. In Tasm 1, Peter isn't quite the iconic hero we know him to be yet. He's an asshole to criminals, and he's a menace in the eyes of the law. Then, in Tasm 2, Peter is beloved by New York. He's iconic. He's a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man who will stop a kid from being bullied and even walk him home. This suit looks much more friendly than the original and matches the actions Peter makes in this movie. These suits alone will tell you that these two Peters definitely don't act the same way. That's the beauty of the Tasm suit. You see Spider-Man bullying a criminal in this outfit and you're like, yeah, that man dresses the part. But why is this redesign of the classic suit okay, and the other ones aren't? Well, it's two things. Most of the time, it's changed for no reason. Like in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, I can understand why they changed the suit because everyone in that game had a slight redesign. But sometimes there's Marvel Spider-Man the TV series. What difference is there if he's wearing the classic suit, and not this one with the segmented belt? Same thing could be said for the PS4 suit, but the redesign is a cool one, and was definitely made out of love, so I can excuse it. But what about this suit? Why does this suit need to be different? Why would you think to change it this much? There was so many points in this design where you could have stopped and been like, why am I doing this? But you didn't. Also, the logos are poopy. The Tasm suit was redesigned out of necessity. The classic suit would have been great in this movie, but the Tasm suit fits the look of the movie and the themes of the character much better. I meant two things earlier, but there's really just one. There's really just one reason. Change it for a reason! If you're gonna change the classic suit, change it for a reason! Hello, everyone. This is the, the wacky... The wacky, funny, unscripted section of the video where I cover the differences between this Spider-Man outfit and the original. Well, guess what? Uh, this costume's so different that I feel like there's no need to compare it to what Spider-Man looked like in the comics as compared to the movie. So, BOOM! He's dead. Uh, upon first appearance, you can already tell that they changed a couple of things. Of course, the controversial yellow eyes. I either know people who hate the yellow eyes on this suit or they love the yellow eyes on this suit. Me. I love the yellow eyes. I think the yellow eyes are great and they add to the darker feel that the suits gives off. I've seen a lot of people that make edits of this costume saying that, Oh, it looks so much better with white eyes. The eyes would look so much- No. No, it wouldn't. It would look slightly more friendly and I think having them be yellow keeps that sort of malintent this motherfucker has. 
I also noticed that there's this weird thing the web pattern does where it sort of meets it a weird way in the midsection and then it does a thing where it like sort of curves down straight into the belt area. It's a little weird but something I also thought I'd mention. Also the spider logo also has a bunch of segmenting in it and it's also much longer and very creepy looking. All right now let's talk about some of my favorite parts about this outfit. Now, if you look very closely, you'll notice that this suit, the fabric parts of it anyway, are actually kind of a maroon. It starts with a maroon texturing, and then when the screen printing comes on to give it that hexagonal texture, it's shiny red hexagon patterned bits to make it appear a brighter red from a distance. And then you throw the web pattern over it, and that maroon is almost lost. It's a good way to give this suit depth and it looks very cool. I don't remember where I heard it, but I can guarantee it was from an official source that these hexagons are three-dimensional and it's actually so that Peter has better resistance. Not resistance. It's so Peter can move quicker in the air. The air pockets, they're, they're air pockets. That's what they're supposed to be. The TASM suit also does a similar thing with the blue. I don't have enough close-up screenshots to verify this, but the fabric is actually like some weird blue pixel camo texture. And then of course you cover it with the black hexagons that are also shiny. I also forgot to mention, all the hexagon printing on this suit is shiny. Love that. Another thing I wanted to mention that I can't really show you in this drawing because I don't have the sections of it on screen. But if you actually look at this screenshot, which I'm going to put on screen now, you can see the seams on the costume. Andrew top stitched this, which was, a, well, not uh, the actor, but the Peter, Peter, Peter top stitched this. And you can tell they actually genuinely tried to make it convincing that this was something that Peter Parker made. Despite the fact that this suit would be the hardest to make if you were to make all the live action Spider-Man suits, they actually tried to make an effort to make this one be believable. And I really appreciate that. This suit is the most interesting to look at up close compared to any other Spider-Man costume. That's pretty much it. That's all I have to say about that for the dissection section. And the dissection section. That's cool. The TASM-1 suit does something that few superhero costumes ever do, and that's adapt parts of the character under it into its design. The only example I can think of is Miles Morales' suit from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Art is very important to who Miles is as a character, as it's his only outlet for self-expression, so naturally, graffiti is worked into the costume's design. While not as well done as Into the Spider-Verse, and what movies are, TASM-1 scratches that itch quite well by designing a costume that matches the energy of the character wearing it. Even if some people hate this costume for its basketball-like appearance, I will never stop singing the praises of this costume. Like it or not, the Amazing Spider-Man suit shows us that straying away from the original design can be done correctly. While some may not like it, a lot of people really, really love it, including myself. And I think the reason people like me love this costume so much is that it isn't afraid to not look just like the original. You'll find that most redesigns, that, for better or for worse, are way too scared to go really far from the original. And that's why the TASM-1 suit will always be the best classic Spider-Man redesign. Hello, um, we're here at the end of the video. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, or I, I don't want to say a lot because I don't like to assume because last time I checked these videos of me re dissecting these costumes don't, it's a fan favorite, but they don't particularly do too well. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to check the stats right now. Okay, never mind. They actually do pretty decently. They get like both of both of the videos previously have gotten like 30 to 27k. Um So yeah, a lot of you guys have been asking me, "Oh, are you going to do the Tasm suit next? Are you going to do the Tasm suit?" Yeah, yes, obviously. I'm going to do the Tasm suit next. And that's what I did today just now. I did the Tasm suit next. Uh, obviously we're going to be doing the TASM 2 suit next. Uh, I know I talked about it a little bit in this video. This video actually came up a little short, so I figured I'd throw a little bit of commentary in there so that you guys can get some extra content. But, yeah, I'm gonna try to, you know, touch on new ground with the TASM suit next time. So, anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching. We recently hit 10k. I really appreciate that. Um, 
YouTube has started to become a viable career option for me, and that's because of you guys sitting down, watching my videos whenever they come out. And I really, really appreciate that. And I think as a reward, I think I'm gonna keep making my suit dissection videos non-premieres. So, whenever, whenever I have one of these videos done, stretch out the oven immediately. You don't have to wait a few days to get to it. So, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye-bye!